Welcome to podcasts recorded live at the Center for Spiritual Living in Portland, Oregon. We have many programs, classes, and workshops developed just for our online audience. To find out more, go to our website at cslportland.org and look under the online tab. Our mission is to open hearts, ignite minds, and make a difference. If you'd like to support our center and its video podcasts, you can donate online at cslportland.org slash donate. Allow us to become part of your extended spiritual community. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are most welcome at the Center for Spiritual Living.
A friends band, we love them. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you all here. We're going to sing together, so get that green song sheet out of your program and get on your feet. Let's all stand up if we can and sing together. I am a light. about 13 billion years back in a time, right back to us right here, right now. Yay, good morning, and welcome to the Portland Center for Spiritual Living. So grateful that you have chosen to be a part of our celebration service. We are a science of mind community that teaches spiritual principles to transform your life and make the entire world a better place and radiate across the entire cosmos. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here. All that we ask is that you stay open to the possibility of changing your entire life simply by changing your mind. It's a great starting point and all else follows. <laughs> My name is Catherine Richer and I serve as one of the licensed practitioners on the center's ecclesiastical team. And it is indeed my honor and privilege to welcome you today. If you are new to the center and joining us in person, and I'd love to see your hand if you're new so we can wave hello. Hello, welcome, yay, welcome. And if there's anyone new on Facebook Live, you could turn around and wave to the camera and say welcome. Anyone listening for the first time as well, we are happy to hear you and see you anytime that we're here together and even afterwards virtually. For those in person here, uh, we do have welcome packets that look like this on the table at the back of the sanctuary. And we also, all of the information that's in the packet is available on our website at cslportland.org under the About Us menu tab. Either way, you'll get a lot of information about who we are, what we stand for, 
and how we might serve you. So you can visit our website anytime. You can also sign up for email subscriptions on the homepage, and they include a weekly email of our uh, events and services, a free program called 365 Earnest Homes, and this is a daily affirmation in your email taken from the writings of Ernest Holmes, who was the founder of the Science of Mind community, along with uh, an inspiring picture and reflective mural to kind of chew on for that day, uh, presented by our Reverend Larry. And then you can enter your birthday to receive an e-card and a gift on your birthday. And I encourage you to use that gift that you receive on your birthday. It is actually a session for a free pract practitioner session with one of our licensed spiritual practitioners, so yay. I would like to share a few announcements in particular. Uh, please note that all of these are Pacific time. Our Sunday service here is live at 11 a.m. every Sunday, also later on the week on YouTube and podcast. We have Wednesday night meditations on Zoom at 7. And this week, Sylvia Kearns, licensed practitioner, leads a meditation on faith the size of a mustard seed. Friday, you can have lunch with Reverend Larry on Zoom, so it's kind of lunch, but it's really more about getting together and having deep conversations, maybe exploring the Sunday message a bit deeper, and that's at 11.30 in the morning. We also have online Zoom groups for our Social Justice Book Club and our 12-step program for women, facilitated by licensed practitioner Nancy Ashley. This summer, we have an exciting virtual workshop that's open for registration now through the website. And this one explores the power of Jesus' cosmic prayer, which I'm guessing goes back to the original Aramaic language, which is very cosmic. And it's healing of healing history of healing and empowerment. So in the workshop, you'll also have a chance to create your own personal prayer of power. So you can sign up on our website. There are two Divine Dining Parties left in September with plenty of sign-ups available. It's a fun way to enjoy a party, have somebody make a meal for you, which I always appreciate, and also support the center at the same time. So there's more information in your program and also, of course, online, and you can purchase tickets uh, to the parties online. We also have Bring a Friend Sunday on July 31st. Obviously, bring a friend to the celebration service along with you, and then right afterwards is our annual picnic in Peninsula Park. So there is a postcard in your pamphlet for today that you could give to a friend or keep for yourself as a reminder of the picnic. We have a favorite area in the park that we've reserved with sun and shade, as well as easy access to water features for the kids. We'll bring burgers, and veggie burgers, and hot dogs. And you're invited to bring your own favorite picnic food to share with others. Today, our special music features Kelly Jones. Welcome, Kelly. Always lovely to have you here. And of course, the Fabulous Friends Band. Yay for the Fabulous Friends Band. Today's message, the Big Bang and beyond, how fitting for what we've recently seen from the James Webb Telescope. The Big Bang and Beyond is by Reverend Barbara Wiest. Welcome, Reverend Wiest. Really lovely to have you here. <laughs> Wonderful. So at this point, with all the announcements over, you can take a nice deep breath, sit back and relax wherever you are, with your tea at home, here in the sanctuary. Just relax and open yourself, because I know that somewhere between the music, the meditation, and the message is exactly what your heart came to receive. God. 
And in that place of I am, how grateful I am to know that there is one and only one power. One power, one presence, one intelligence. It is the power and the source back of everything. It is that presence that is never an absence. It is the life force, the wave, the frequency, the light. It is the infinite wisdom, the infinite intelligence the backbone and the architecture and the structure of all of life. And it is all that there is. It is this one thing called by millions of names and beyond names. This one thing that revels and dances and loves and joys in expressing itself in, through, and as every speck of creation. From the billions and billions of galaxies to the smallest of atoms. Our own Milky Way galaxy our perfectly placed solar system, life force sun, precious earth, and all upon and within it. And me, I know that I am an infinite, unique expression of life itself, and as this is true for me and of me, I know it is true for everyone here and everyone within the sound of my voice. Everyone is an embodiment of that very same power and intelligence that creates entire worlds and universes. They are perfect, whole, and unique expressions, stars wrapped in skin, a one-time way through their physical form, their spiritual form, for life and consciousness to express itself as only they can in their uniqueness. So I speak my word for and about everyone Knowing this to be the truth of who they are, I call forth a willingness to know that very same wisdom and intelligence that was in the tiny speck that became the entire universe is within them. It is their creative power, their wisdom, the presence within them through which they are given the power to create their own lives, their experiences, to know and see and witness their heart's desire unfold as that light rushes in to fulfill each desire with a yes. I am so grateful to know that this is the truth of life, that yes is, that the power and the presence and the wisdom that is everywhere all of the time through infinity is right here and right now. And in that gratitude of that knowing, I release my word into the cosmic womb of infinite possibility and potential, that place of imprint onto consciousness itself that says, yes, my beloved, and you are my beloved. It is indeed already done. 
So I simply let it be, and I allow it to be. And together we say, and so it is. And in the moments of meditation that follow, I invite you to feel into the illuminated light within your own heart. What do I want my day to be? I choose. What do I want to feel today? I choose. What do I want to be today? I choose. To be grateful, so grateful today. I choose to be grateful, grateful today. I choose to be grateful, so grateful today. I choose to be grateful, grateful today. I choose to be happy. To be happy, happy today. I choose to be peaceful, so peaceful today. I choose to be peaceful, peaceful. Whatever I choose is how my day's gonna be. I plan what I want, cause it's all up to me today. I choose. To be loving, so loving today. I choose to be loving, loving today. I choose to be joyful, so joyful today. I choose to be joyful, joyful. Whatever I choose is how my day's going to be. I plan what I want because it's all up to me. It's all up to me today. I choose to be thankful, so thankful today. I choose to be thankful, thankful today. I choose. To be grateful, so grateful today. I choose to be grateful, grateful every day. Grateful, grateful every day. Grateful, grateful. I am grateful, grateful.
Okay, now wasn't that wonderful when nobody was up dancing? Oh, wait, I did see the ones at home up there dancing. So I, you were dancing? I was dancing in my seat, which is great. Thank you, Kelly Jones and the band. Wonderful. Wow. Thank you. That was a Karen Drucker song, and it's perfect for today. Talk about the use of the power of your word. Grateful, thankful, peaceful. We choose. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, there was other stuff. But Catherine, practitioner Catherine, thank you for the prayer. She got the big bang stuff. So we got the big bang. We got the power of your word. Now I'm just going to talk about incidental things that happen in my life. Okay, how's that? Well, good morning. I'm Reverend Barbara Weiss, and I am so grateful to be here with all of you in person and those of you online. I know we have Sharon with an owie at home. She couldn't make it here today, but thank you all for being here. I'm so excited with all the friends and family and all of you. Some of you I haven't seen for, so, for such a while. Well, last week, Reverend Larry did an amazing job simplifying for us the beginning of the Ernest Holmes book called How to Use the Science of Mind. And he explained the spiritual law that is going and went into the law of vibration. And if we break a law, there are consequences and we suffer. <laughs> no. ah, yikes. So today, let's take this understanding of the law of vibration and get clear on how there is great power in our words, how we create our daily life, and use that in accordance with the law of attraction. As always, when I speak, my mind begins to open up to spirit when I find out I'm going to speak. And I'm not sure, like Larry said, here's this broad range, the Big Bang. Oh, I can find something for that. The Big I mean, that's like everything, right? And so I open up to what the talk is going to bring to me. And so when I knew I was going to come here and speak, I decided I wanted to go get something new to wear, just because, why not? <laughs> and I went into the store, and as I picked, picked this out and, and this, I got up to the, the front to, to pay, and there was a, a mother and a daughter there standing, and, and the mother said um, to me, she said, oh, are you going on a cruise? And I thought in my mind, yeah, I'd love to, but uh, no. I said, I'm a minister, and I'm going to be speaking. And before I could get the rest of my sentence out, she said, you're a mistress? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, to try to even finish a sentence even further than that, I was laughing so hard I could barely talk. And um, I kept trying to say, no, 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 I'm a minister. <laughs> you know, like trying to watch, you know, talk about watching my words, right? So I did correct her, but I knew it was through all my giggling, and so I really don't know if she heard me, what I really said. And needless to say that they didn't stay in the store very long after that. But I have had a great giggle about that ever since. Now that's the way for me that I like to open up to spirit, to, to, to know that something's happening that's way beyond me and that as long as I open up, I'm good. So I understand the power of words and I understand that that didn't happen by accident because nothing happens by accident. So I decided that I would look up the word mistress because I knew one definition and I knew I wasn't that. <laughs> Whichever, I don't know what you are all thinking. There were two definitions that I, that I said, oh, okay, I could do that. First was a woman in position of authority or control. Okay, the second, a woman who is skilled in a particular subject or activity. It's like, okay, well, no, not like that. Get out of the gutter or don't. I'll join you there in a minute. But I do have the pleasure of being a minister, and I do know that as I open up to spirit, I allow spirit to move through me, and what comes through me is what I get to share with you. So it's like, okay, I guess I am a mistress, but it still makes me giggle, just saying. <laughs> so from the Bible in John chapter 1, we read, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So with one word... Everything that we know was dreamed and created. 
with one word, God, you can say love, peace, joy, whatever that is for you. One word. That shows how powerful our words are. Can you get that? With one word, everything was created. So with that then, who knows what we can dream and what we speak and what is created from the power of our words. Holy mackerel. That's huge. So for each one of us, we were created, and, and Catherine, you did such a perfect job of this. As she was doing her prayer, I'm thinking, that's what I wrote. That's what I wrote. That One mind. There is one mind. So we all have our own image and likeness of God. We have our own little special twist to the godness that we are. There is no one like each of us individually, and there will never be another one. Now, some of people that we know, we might say, thank God there's not going to be another one like you. Or we could say, thank God there's not going to be another one like you, and you're in my life right now. Thank you for being here in my life. So what words do you wish to express into the universe for the experience of you? What are those words for you? Your thoughts, your words, your decisions and actions affect each of us. And not just those of us in the room and online. Reverend Larry talked about vibration last week and vibration goes out into the world way beyond, I think, what any of us can even imagine. But think about those pictures that the telescope took recently. Think that your vibration goes all the way out there. Wow. That makes me think a little bit more about how do I want to present myself in the world and what are the words that I want to speak out in the world. And so for me, I know that that means that I need to clean things up a little bit every once in a while. Some of my attitudes, because sometimes they're the opposite of loving, peaceful, and joy-filled. And those are the, that's the energy that I want to express out into the world. So think of what that is for you. What do you want people to know you as? Your individuality, your specialness. Words can be used in many ways. There is energy attached to them, and all of that vibration moves through our bodies and out into the world. We co-create in this world, and we are all connected. Even though it may not seem that way, we truly are all connected. We can use our words as a weapon, or we can use our words to love and to heal. We have our voice, our word. It doesn't cost a thing to create an amazing, connected life. Just consciousness of what we say, just. I say just consciousness, like that's the easiest thing when, when I find myself in certain moods. Oh, just be conscious, okay. <laughs> and when we do this, though, when we are conscious of our thoughts, words, dec decisions, and actions, we can create an amazing life, yes? Here's a poem I read recently and I really appreciated these words by Shalan Harkin. It says, why are you so happy? Why are you so happy, someone asked me. Why am I so happy? Darling, why are you so drab? Birds just threw themselves into the sky like a handful of winged seeds to go pollinate the south with music. Each evening, the sun creates a symphony of color and your heart matches it. I've got two hands that can hold your face and magical eyes with black holes in the middle of them that spend their whole lives pulling in light and beauty because even the winter snag is shivering with secret promise and I can see a hint of its fruit. Because every bucket of your darkness is alchemized into wisdom simply by handing it to the light. When we were born, God gave us an automatically refillable bag of jewels called a soul that we can share with any living thing to make it sparkle and sing. 
Darling, why am I so happy? Simply because today I'm choosing to remember all of that. Isn't that beautiful? I get goosebumps. I'm choosing to remember all of that. In our lives, take 100%. How much of our lives is really... I wish there weren't kids in the room sometimes because I want to swear, but I'm not going to. I'm going to be very good today. <laughs> just today. But how much of our lives is just junk, right? Really. I mean, here's 100%. How much of our life is, is blah? Some days it feels like it's more, right? But if you look at our lives, what we get to envision and see in our lives, the people who we get to go meet, even having a day at home alone, the, the air, the earth, the stars, the nature, maybe this much is really crap. Really? If you think about it? But that bit, it's like the sparkle. It gets my attention sometimes. But really, it's so much more. So let's choose to remember all the amazing things in our lives and take the focus from this little bit. So when we come to the power of our word, do you speak to yourself the way that you would speak to your most favorite person? Hmm. When you think of this special person, do you come up with positive descriptions or do you think of negative things? So this is early on in the talk, but I want, it fits in perfectly here. The homework for this, this week, Larry loves to do that, Reverend Larry. But think about it. Choose someone in your life that you can only imagine saying loving things to. If it's a partner, well, probably not a partner, never mind on that one, because you get free reign with partners, right? But a friend, a, a grandchild, a grandparent. Think of that person. And so for the homework, you're really going to get into it on how wonderful that person is and how much you appreciate that person in, in your life. Okay, so you're going to dig in there a little bit more. And then, once you feel and know why that person is so important to you and you say great things about that individual, you are going to imagine that you are that important. Oh, because you really are. You actually are that important. And that knowing that then, it translates into, well, if I speak this way to that individual, then I desire to speak that way to myself. Now, I'm sure I'm the only one that goes through those, those thoughts sometimes that aren't the best. So do the homework for me. So it's about speaking gently to ourselves, speaking with an open heart to ourselves, giving ourselves a little bit of a break every once in a while. Like, you're doing great. You are doing so great. Every day you're doing the best job that you can, right here and right now. And when we speak to ourselves this way, it helps to shape the outcome of our day, of our life. Kelly was just telling us with words, today I choose, and then you fill in the blank, to be what? I don't necessarily get out of bed every morning and, and go, today I choose to really just be in the dumps. That's just not something that I normally do because I think mostly when I get out of bed, I'm not quite awake yet, so it takes me a while. There are consequences in our lives, though, and that's the nature of us being here. So if you decide to, let's say, just dive off of a rock into water head first, if you don't cross your hands in front, you might get a headache, your shorts might come off. <laughs> but if you jump feet first, those two likelihoods are off the table and you won't moon someone unless you really want to. You know what I mean. So it follows then if you speak negatively to yourself all day long, it will transfer into your words that you use. Let's say like when you're driving and somebody cuts you off, 
those words might be a little different. Or when you're in line at the store and somebody in front of you has a huge basket full of things, and my, my store is Costco, I admit it, and sometimes I'll get behind somebody, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm totally out here, I'll admit it, and I see that, you know, and it's like, just move your cart forward, and when you start putting things on the conveyor belt already, and I want to help them, but I don't because I know in that moment my energy is not in the space. And then I just settle back and I go, okay, there's a reason that I'm sitting here and waiting so long. I'm so long. <laughs> well, what if we speak to ourselves positively? What do you think the consequences would be? Do you think that you would find that there's more love in your life? Starts with love of self that your day seems to zip by because you're in a state of gratitude, that all of the things you truly desire seem to appear out of nowhere, that is the power of your word right there. What we say out into the word, the energy that goes with us, brings back to us that which we're putting out. And if we start with ourselves and go, okay, I love you, I know that sounds weird, but it's okay to say that. You can look in the mirror and, and find the things that you do like. Sometimes for me on certain days, it's like I have to look really hard. Other days, it's a piece of cake. So how do you choose to speak to yourself, what you choose to speak, and whom you choose to speak to? All of that has consequences on what your life looks like to you on the outside. Charles Fillmore, the founder of Unity, said this daily, I fairly sizzle with zeal and enthusiasm, and I spring forth with a mighty faith to do the things that ought to be done by me. Right! Good for you, Charles! <laughs> I have that, actually, in, in something that sticks on my shower. And one day, um, my son and his wife were staying over there. Power had gone off, and they took my room, and they came out of the shower. And later on in the day, you know how when you say stuff to your kids, it always comes back? Whether, what, whatever it is, but this day was hilarious. Both of them came down the stairs and said, hey, hey, mom, I fairly sizzle with zeal and enthusiasm and I spring forth with a mighty faith to do the things that ought to be done by me. And they were teasing me, but I didn't care because I love those words. <laughs> Can you imagine doing that daily? Wow, what a shift. What would be attracted to us in our day if we got up every morning saying that? and believing that, or at least giving it a try. We have to love ourselves first, we have to. We have to be gentle with ourselves, and then we can focus on what is happening outside in the world. Ernest Holmes said this, the divine presence has never for one moment left any object, any person, any place, or anything, from the smallest to the greatest, the divine presence is always harmony and wholeness. Therefore, we are never alone. The divine presence is always present. And that presence moves in through and as us always, in all ways, always. So being conscious about how we speak knowing that the power of our words have consequences. By living this life of connection daily, we come to find that we are in a space of harmony and wholeness and get to that place of knowing, I am the divine. I am the divine. Each of us can say that, I am the divine. Holmes continues, this presence is more than a manifestation of God. It is God in that person, in us. God is all in all. God is all power, all presence, and all life. So I ask you just right where you are, take in a deep breath and release it. And another deep breath in. And release it. And one more deep breath in. And as you release us, I want you to repeat after me. There is one life. There is one life. That life is God's life. That life is God's life. 
That life is perfect. That life is, perfect. That life is my life now. There is one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There is one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. Breathe that in. Breathe that in. Ah, you are not separate from that which created everything in the universe. We are all connected, unified and in one mind, that universal mind. So I have a question for you. Look at this cup. There's liquid in it, yes? So think about yourself in your own life. Are you a cup half full kind of person? Or are you a cup half empty kind of person? Which one are you? Because whichever one you are, that will create the energy with which you put out into the world, that ripple of energy. But here's the cool thing. Here's a new thought. Hold on. Ah, it changed, right? Here's a new thought, though. What about being a cup full person. There's water in here. There's air in here. The cup's full. It's always full. Does that shift anything for you? Even if I take another drink, it's still full. So in your home, take a cup, You'll put as much liquid in it as you want and sit it there. And every once in a while, when you come around to it, go, oh, yeah, that's that thing Red Barb was talking about. It's full. It's full. Okay. I'm full. I am full. So think about this in the consciousness of how you view, view your life. As you become more aware of your thoughts and how you express those thoughts out loud, and the power and energy behind those words, you bring consciousness to any issue or situation that you may have. And then bring your faith to that. And God is there, present. We can do something, each one of us. There has been, if you turn on the news, which we do, there is so much going on. And sometimes the words that want to escape my mouth don't match that energy which I want to project out into the world. So what can I do? Start with me first. Become conscious and aware. Talk to myself like I would that sweet being. I have a two-and-a-half-year-old granddaughter. I only say wonderful things to her. You know, in each one of us, there's a two-and-a-half-year-old. So I know for me, if I go and look in the mirror on any given morning, day, I can be gentle and kind to that two-and-a-half-year-old. And then as she starts to grow and I see the seven-year-old, I can be kind to her. And I get up to my 65 and I can be really kind to her because that's the pattern that I'm willing to set. And so then as I do my work and then step out into the day with this higher vibration of love, then that's what I can give into the world. And the ripple, remember the ripple? That it goes out beyond our imaginings and comes back to us. That ripple effect. So the Big Bang did occur and created each and every one of us with our own little tweak our own little uniqueness. And because of that Big Bang, because of the word, we are all connected. Knowing this, there's a recognition then the divine presence moves in through and as each one of us creates that one mind, the one universal entity, which is us. So what can I do in the world then? 
I can work on me. I can take this energy into the world and help heal. Things come up right now. All that's coming up right now is because it needs to be healed and released. So I want to add love to that. Because underneath everything, everything is love. Under everything is love. So I'm going to move into prayer now. So if you'd like, close your eyes. And I really want you to listen to these words from Ernest Holmes. I know that there is an inner presence in everything. I know that this presence responds to me. I know that everyone is an incarnation of God, that the living spirit breathes through all. I recognize this spirit and it responds to me. I realize that everything is alive, awake, and aware with spirit. I commune with this divine presence. The spirit within me reaches out and communes with the spirit in everything and everyone I contact. It is the same spirit in all, over all, and through all. I have a deep realization that I am surrounded by an infinite law which receives the impress of my thought and acts creatively upon it. I am conscious of my ability to use this law to direct it for specific purposes for myself and others. There is nothing in me that can deny, limit, obstruct, divert, or in any way hinder my use of this law. It is within my own mind because God is right where I am. In calm confidence, in perfect trust, in abiding faith and with complete peace, I let go of every problem as a problem. I receive the answer as fulfillment. So then know, know this, the truth of this with Holmes' words. I ask this, Creator, bless my words to speak only kindness and impart only love. Bless them to be used only to build up and create confidence. Bless them to put light into the world where there was darkness before. Hold my words when they might cause pain. Keep them within when they have the power to tear down and crush. Bless my words. May each of us daily then surrender to the wisdom and the power within as we create the day that we desire. Today I choose to be grateful, happy, peaceful, loving, joyful, thankful. And I know I will go within to connect with spirit and continue along my day by walking with this same spirit, the spirit that was created at the beginning of all that was, is, and will ever be. I look forward to seeing what my thoughts, words, and actions will attract. Yay, God. And together we say, and so it is. Mm. Blessings, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here, Ramus. Yeah. Now is our time of conscious giving, participating in the reciprocal law of giving and receiving. I invite you to take your check, your tithe, your gift in your hand, and if you'd like, you may place it over your heart and repeat after me. Graciously I give from a place of love, knowing that as I give, so do I richly, lavishly, abundantly, and gratefully receive. And so it is. For those of you online, you can make a donation on the website at cslportland.org slash donate. The ushers begin receiving the gifts.
to have you with us again. Thank you. So sparkly. <laughs> Come on forward. Thank you. Thank you. I bless these gifts with great, great gratitude and love. I know that our vision of a world that works for everyone's highest, best, and good, and our mission of personal empowerment 
flow out as we pay our bills and make our gifts to other nonprofits. This circle of love expands into the world. I let it be. And so it is. Thank you. So if you're not feeling quite so sparkly or quite so joyful or you just have something you'd like a little assistance with, we do have the ability to help you out right here. If you'd like to uh, consider a prayer with one of our licensed practitioners, we will be standing here at the front of the podium right after the service for what we call a one-minute miracle. We know there's no miracles. We know there's strong intentions and consciousness, but it's just a fun way to say it. So you're welcome to do that. We also do have prayer request cards at the Ministry of Prayer table where Nancy is. And it, if you fill one out, it's our honor for the entire team, all of the practitioners and the ministers, to pray for you throughout the week. Also, for our online audience, you can submit a prayer request on our website at cslportland.org, and it is automatically distributed through that beautiful frequency and wave of technology to all of our ministers and practitioners, again, to pray for you for the entire week. So I invite you to do that if you feel called to do so. And now I'd like to, once again, can we give a hand for Reverend Barbara Weiss for being here today and for offering our closing benediction. Thank you. So I invite you to stand for the benediction and you will repeat after me. And Larry gave me this wonderful cheat sheet. I love it. <laughs> Something wonderful is flowing through me right now. It is this thing called life. It is this thing called life. Life is in my mind. Life is in my mind. Life is in my body. Life is in my body. And life is in my affairs. Life is in my affairs. I think it. I think it. I believe it. I believe it. I accept it. I accept it. Just the way it is. Just the way it is. Thank you, life. Thank you, life. And if you want to bow your close your eyes now with me. No, know this right now, know with me, <laughs> that even a dog has words, and they speak truth, and that is love. We are never alone. The divine presence of love is within you always, and any time during the day or during the night when forgetfulness comes upon you, possibly, simply go within and remember that you are always, always loved. In gratitude for this remembrance, we let it be, and together we say, and so it is. You are loved. Have a wonderful day.
If you happen to be in the Portland, Oregon area, we'd love to have you visit in person. The Portland Center for Spiritual Living is located at 6211 Northeast Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. We have inspirational services at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. every Sunday. We also have many programs, classes, and workshops developed just for our online audience. To find out more, go to our website at cslportland.org and look under the Online tab. We have a variety of content dedicated specifically for our online listeners. Our mission is to open hearts, ignite minds, and make a difference. If you'd like to support our center, you can donate online at cslportland.org slash donate. Our website is also the place to learn more about what's going on at the center or to contact us. Allow us to become part of your extended spiritual community. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, You are most welcome at the Center for Spiritual Living.